What is going on my favorite skiers and snowboarders? I'm at the top of Black Home Mountain and it's another beautiful bluebird day. Today I'll be discussing one of the most controversial topics in the province of British Columbia. <gasps> Which mountain is best, Whistler or Black Home? So I headed out to the chairlifts asking, you know, people on Whistler what they prefer. Natalie. Natalie. Jamie. And Jamie. Okay, this is a real contentious topic, especially in British Columbia. Um, Natalie and Jamie, which mountain is better, Whistler or Blackcomb? Oh, I'm gonna go with Whistler. You got you a know, Whistler. I might do Blackcomb. Oh, how reason. are you guys even friends? Right? Snowboarder <laughs> skier too. We should have left that bar up. <laughs> Whistler or Blackcomb? Blackcomb 100%. Blackcomb 100%. Whistler or Blackcomb? We're big Whistler fans. Huge Whistler fans. <laughs> we got some massive Whistler fans to my right. What a debate. What mountain do you prefer, Whistler or Blackcomb? Whistler. Which mountain is better, Whistler or Blackcomb? Grew up with Whistler, so I'm gonna have to say Whistler. Another Whistler! Yes, Come yes. on, man! <laughs> Whistler or Blackcomb? Whistler. James, Whistler or Blackcomb? You know, I'm gonna have to be uh, the fifth Whistler of the day. Just growing up skiing Whistler, I know it a lot better than Blackcomb and uh, it just has a special, special spot in my heart. With a little bit of movie magic, we can change his mind. Have to be uh, the fifth black hole of the day. Just growing up skiing black hole. It just has a special, special spot in my heart. <laughs> Whistler or black hole? Whistler. Mm. That was fast. Yeah. <laughs> that was no really fast. <laughs> Holy crap! Whistler or black hole? Definitely black hole. <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Greg actually has a brain. <laughs> Whistler or black hole? So far, I'm liking Blackcomb. You guys want to join in the far end? Sure. Whis Whistler or Blackcomb? Uh, Blackcomb. Blackcomb. Black right on. There we go. Yeah. Whistler or Blackcomb? Which mountain is better? Which is the best? Whistler. Whistler or Blackcomb? Blackcomb all the way. And the consensus I found was interesting. It was mainly Whistler, but to be completely honest, I'm not sure if all the people I met in the chairlifts were longtime Whistler skiers. So I don't think that was a very good test group. I think the best test group's gonna be you guys in the comments section letting me know, do you prefer Whistler or do you prefer Blackcomb? I wanna see some animosity in the comments section. I wanna see some keyboard warriors yeah, going out yeah, and letting me know yeah. why you prefer Whistler over Blackcomb or why you prefer Blackcomb over Whistler or why you like both equally. Today we're gonna to compare Whistler and Blackcomb over a number of different categories. I'm gonna give them points, and then you guys in the comments can decide once and for all which mountain is best. So let's jump right into it. So let's start with a little bit of Whistler Blackcomb history. These two mountains weren't conjoined, they weren't best friends from the beginning. Whistler was developed first, and then Blackcomb came second and opened in 1980 as a competitor. The competition was actually good though because it made the mountains keep building up, like the space race building up their mountains. So the competition was healthy and it kind of made the mountains what they are today. It wasn't until 1997 that Intro West bought both mountains, conjoined them to the distaste of all the Whistler fanatics and all the Blackcomb fanatics, it conjoined the mountains to make it one mountain, the one we know today, Whistler Blackcomb. And in 2007, they connected the two darn mountains with the Peak to Peak Gondola, which is 11 minutes long, making it more accessible than ever. So there's a short history. Right when Blackcomb was developed, Whistler people started calling Blackcomb the dark side. Which doesn't quite make sense because it's quite a bit lighter in terms of sunlight than the Whistler side. Anyways, let's jump right into our first category. So here's how the rating scale is gonna work. I'm gonna give two points for a clear advantage, one point for a tie, and zero points if it loses or there's nothing. So we're gonna start right from the top with skiable acreage. Whistler is gigantic and it boasts 4,757 skiable acres of terrain. Just look at it. From the, from the far side of the flute bowl to the west side of Peak to Creek, you have almost 5,000 acres of skiable terrain on one ski hill. That's flipping nuts. The Black Home side only has 3,414 acres of skiable terrain, which is nothing to laugh at. That is a lot of acres. Whistler's got the edge for skiable acres. Whistler 2, Black Home 0. Now let's talk about vertical, which for many people is more important than the actual acreage of a ski mountain. Black Home has 5,280 feet, which is over 1,600 meters of skiable vertical. The Whistler side, however, only has 5,020 feet, 
which is about 1,500 meters of skiable vertical. Blackcomb has more vertical than Whistler. So Blackcomb's on the board. We've now got a 2-2 tie, folks. Now we'll look at terrain. So let's start with the beginner terrain category. If you're an absolute beginner, never skied before, you can get a $40 ticket for yourself, I believe, or a $20 ticket for your kid to ski the Olympic and the Magic Chair. The Magic Chair is the Bunny Hill on, uh, on the Black Home side, the Olympic Chair is the Bunny Hill on the Whistler side. But if you're a beginner and you wanna take in these views, check it out. Whistler is going to be your best bet. You've got the Ego Bowl on the Emerald Chair, which is the perfect chair for someone transitioning from the Bunny Hill to the, uh, to the more advanced slopes you got more run choices it's more wide open and there's more of a mellow slope angle on the black home side most of the green runs are all cat tracks um you don't really have like a nice green designated chair like an emerald chair the cat skinner is your best bet on the black home side if you're a beginner so it's not as conducive to to learning as a beginner when you're just starting to kind of link turns get comfortable with stopping so whistler has the edge for beginner terrain Whistler 4, Blackcomb 2. So now let's look at intermediate terrain and carving runs. This one's an interesting one. Uh, both mountains are amazing for carving, but they have their advantages and disadvantages. Blackcomb is the king of alpine carving runs. Seventh Heaven is loaded with huge wide open piece, which are phenomenal for carving with an alpine view. It is, uh, it, it's really un unbeatable and you can't find carving like that any place else. You got a lot of run choices on Seventh Heaven that you can carve down in the alpine. So, so Blackcomb has the advantage for alpine carving and it's also got the advantage for mid-mountain carving. The crystal chair is a hell of a lot of fun and it's a great spot to carve on the mid-mountain. It's rolly, it's got You've got Ridge Runner, you've got Twist and Shout, you've got Rock and Roll, it's super rolly, super fun, and super nice. Carving on the crystal chair is epic. Now for the lower mountain, that's where Whistler has the advantage. If you're a hard carver, maybe an X racer, and you like a steep, hard pack pitch with lots of vertical, the Garbanzo chair is king. Carving on the Garbanzo chair is so much fun. I can spend hours on Dave Murray downhill and Ptarmigan just absolutely slaying it. So the Garbanzo chair is killer. You also can't forget on the Whistler side, Whistler has the Peak to Creek and the Bernstew Trail. Bernstew is the most scenic beginner run probably in North America. And the Peak to Creek is the longest groomed, when it's groomed, longest intermediate run in North America. And it's freaking amazing when it's groomed. Thanks to the Peak to Creek, the Burnt Stew, and the Lower Mountain on Garbanzo, uh, Whistler is tied with Blackcomb for carving. They're neck and neck. Whistler five, Blackcomb three. Let's talk about advanced terrain, single black diamonds. This one is another personal preference one. No mountain really has an advantage. Both mountains are loaded with solid advanced runs. I think if you're just transitioning into black diamonds, Whistler's a bit better because it's got all the open kind of bowls, less trees, less rocks, less things to dodge when you're learning how to ski black diamonds, you know, runs on the, uh, on the Whistler side, like low roll on the Harmony chair is a great example of a good transitional run to learning black diamonds. The blacks on black home are a little more intense, a little more trees, and, uh, and usually a little more rocks. But all in all, there's great black diamonds across both mountains. Uh, so the advanced terrain is at an absolute time. I cannot pick one over the other, they're both great. It's six for Whistler, four for Blackcomb. Now let's talk about expert and extreme terrain. So Whistler and Blackcomb honestly are loaded with some of the most extreme inbounds runs in North America. If you haven't already checked out my guides or my videos, you can check out my videos on Whistler and Blackcomb's steepest runs. I also got guides on the Rise and Alpine website that you can check out. Both mountains have very, very extreme and intense double blacks and triple black runs. The majority of the steepest runs on the Whistler side are on the peak chair area, and the peak chair is Woo! legendary. It's got some insane lines, some of the most legendary lines like Coffin, Air Jordan, that, uh, that you've probably heard about a bunch. So the peak chair is killer. You can also find some really intense lines off the different ridges from the, from the peak chair and also over in the flute bowl. Blackham, on the other hand, has loads of different uh, expert terrain and expert skiing areas from the steep trees to the crystal zone, to the glacier, to Spanky's ladder, to the secret bowl, to the horseman zone where I'm standing. Blackcomb has got a lot of variety in extreme and expert terrain. So Blackcomb takes the edge on this one. We are now at a 6-6 six, six 
Ty, let's talk about my favorite type of skiing, tree skiing. So we'll start with the black home side. On the black home side, you've got the crystal chair, which is the mecca of tree skiing. It is so fun. Outer Limits, Arthur's Choice, CBC. You've got the runs to the far left. Uh, you've got the accelerator trees and you've got the Alpine glades. So unlike Whistler, you've got some super high, you know, easy to lap on the chair glades on seventh heaven. So the glades on seventh heaven are on both sides. They're so much fun. The trees on the crystal chair are flipping awesome. And the trees everywhere else on the mountain on black home side, frankly, are really, really fun once you get to know them. Whistler side definitely has trees as well. The emerald chair is a killer spot for low angle tree skiing. If you're just starting out, the bottom part of Harmony and like Wet Dreams and Gun Barrels is also amazing for tree skiing and everything off the back of Harmony Ridge, kind of between Sun Bowl and all the way to Harvey's, that tree skiing is super mint. But with the Whistler side, I find it's harder to get a nice top to bottom tree skiing run. You're usually cutting through the Alpine or if you want a really good tree skiing run, you know, sometimes you have to go all the way up the peak chair and down a run like bonsai or something like that down a run like the christmas trees and all the way down the red chair to get that tree skiing all the tree skiing on the whistler side is a bit lower mountain compared to the black home side which has a bit of bit of trees located at higher elevation levels i think black homes got a clear edge on tree skiing so black home takes the lead eight six with the advantage in tree skiing the next category we're looking at is, is one of the main reasons people visit Whistler Blackcomb and one of the main reasons they're so excited about it. Bulls. So this category we're talking about alpine bulls, open bull skiing opportunities, and which mountain is best. On the Blackcomb side, you've got the Secret Bull, the Opal Bull, you've got the Glacier, you've got Lakeside Bull, you've got the Gemstone Bulls. Lots of bull skiing on the Blackcomb side, but a lot of this bull skiing involves a little bit of navigation like Spanky's. There's some more rocks, sometimes uh, sometimes some more rocks, a bit more craggy. On the Whistler side, it is very clear that it's got a lot of open bull skiing. From the Glacier Bull on the Peak Chair, to the West Bull, to the Symphony Chair, to the Harmony Chair, to the Flute Bull. Whistler, the entire top part is literally open bull skiing. So if you want an unobstructed bull skiing paradise type experience where you're skiing blower powder and don't have to worry about where you're turning and where you're navigating, Whistler has got that open alpine backcountry bull feeling that you're looking for. Black Holmes bulls are sick, but Whistler does have the advantage in alpine bulls. Eight, eight people. Let's talk about hike access terrain. On the Black Home side, you've got more short boot packs to Sweet Lines. You've got the Horseman Zone, you've got the Glacier, you've got Spanky's Ladder, you've got the Gray Zone. So you've got a couple more hike access options, which are super fun, easy to access, and make great terrain. On the Whistler side, you got a little hike up to West Cirque, you've got the hike to Exhilaration Excitation, um, and you've got the uh, you've got the hike up to Flute Bowl, which is legendary flute bowl is legendary so black home has more variety and more hikes and they're a bit shorter which means you can lap it a bit more whereas flute bowl is king for inbounds hike access terrain on the whistler side so because of the flute bowl these two are tied we are at nine nine the hike access terrain is so fun on both sides. Let's talk alpine terrain. So on the black home side, the crystal chair is kind of sub alpine. And then you've got the glacier chair, which goes into the alpine, seventh heaven, which is in the alpine. And then you've got the showcase T-bar. So two chair lifts to access the alpine and one T-bar. On the Whistler side, you've got the symphony chair in the alpine, the harmony chair in the alpine, and the peak chair in the alpine. Like I said before, Whistler has more bull skiing and it has more chair lifts where you can lap Alpine runs as compared to the black home side. So I think I'm gonna give Whistler the edge on Alpine skiing overall. The score is now 11 to nine. Let's talk lift lines. Everyone hates lift lines, but lift lines are a reality at Whistler. Blackham, if you hate lift lines, never come to Whistler because it can get bad on vacations, on weekends, on holidays, man, Lift lines are nuts here. Um, is one side better than the other? No, no side is better than the other. The lifts are gonna be long and the chairs that are the best. You can always expect lines in good snow days, you know, for chairs like Harmony, Peak, Symphony. Um, you can expect lines on the Black Home side on 7th, on the Glacier. 
crystal. Whenever there's good snow, the lines are going to be long and the gondola lines are going to be huge. So I'm giving no advantage in this one. They're tied for lift lines. It can both be bad. It depends on the day, depends on what you're skiing. Patience is key at Whistler Blackham. Whistler Blackham has made me more patient as a person because the lines are that flipping bad. So don't expect one mountain to have better lines than the other. It's a roll of the dice and depends on what chairs you're on at what time of the day. That brings our score to Whistler 12, Black Home 10. Let's talk powder, 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 powder. When the snow dumps, it dumps hard and it does not matter which mountain you're on. If you're on Whistler, the skiing's gonna be amazing. If you're on Blackham, the skiing's gonna be amazing. The powder falls equally on both mountains. Both mountains are tied on this, guys. It's 13 Whistler, 11 Blackham. Let's talk backcountry access. The most notable backcountry access on the Whistler side is up the flute bowl towards Oboe and the singing pass. You can kind of see it going along that ridge there. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up. That's the access from the Whistler side. It's a bit more mellow and there's less variety. You can do like a day trip to, uh, to Fissel. There's a lot of nice low angle stuff kind of on the Whistler side. The black home side, you can access the backcountry from the Showcase T-Bar and, uh, and it's vast, it's extreme, and there's a lot of lines and a lot of places to explore back there. The black home side is where you start for the legendary Spearhead and there's lots of fun day trips to do out there. I did a sweet trip to Mount Patterson last year. It's a lot of fun out there, but remember, if you're going to the backcountry, always bring the appropriate gear, check the forecast and make good decisions. It's all about good decision making. Make sure you have the right training. Black Home takes the gold for backcountry access, and I think that's something everyone can agree upon. But thanks to the backcountry access, we now have a 13 to 13 tie. Let's talk about food. One, two, three, snack time! This seems to be something that, uh, that people always complain about when I look at reviews on Whistler. Uh, there's lots of shit to complain about about Whistler, don't get me wrong. But food for me is a weird one. And you come up to the mountain, you know, I always bring a lunch. Uh, the food on both sides, about 25 bucks for one hamburger and no fries. So I don't even think I've ever tried a hamburger. The only thing I've had is the French fries and a coffee. French fries and coffee are pretty good. But, uh, but if you're buying food, man, it's mountain food. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not even gonna give either one a ranking or a points. So we're just gonna stay tied there. It's mountain food, it's way overpriced, and uh, it's very average. You know, you come up here to ski. I don't really think you come up here to eat uh, gourmet lodge burgers. That's just my two cents. So uh, it's still 13-13. Let's talk gondolas. So to access the Black Home side, you got two choices. You've got the Black Home gondola, which can be accessed from the Upper Village, or you've got the Excalibur gondola, which can be accessed from the Whistler Village or Base 2 on Black Home. On the Whistler side, you've got the Creekside gondola, which can be accessed from Creekside. And then you have the Whistler gondola from the Whistler Village, or you have the Fitzsimmons chair. Uh, and the Fitzsimmons chair is usually the fastest way up Whistler Mountain, just takes a bit longer and you're exposed to the elements. Um, in terms of getting up on the gondolas, neither have an edge, it's a tie because it depends on the day, depends on the lines. Sometimes it takes a while to get up, sometimes it takes no time at all. Really just depends where, you, where you're living, where you're staying, or where you're parking. So they're tied for gondolas. We are at 14 to 14. Sunshine is one of my favorite things when I'm skiing and I'm standing in beautiful sunshine right here, right now today, and it feels so warm, feels so good. In terms of sunshine, Blackham gets more sunshine than the Whistler side. Seventh Heaven is getting hit by sunshine all the time. Uh, right now, this time of year, Whistler's getting hit pretty good, uh, pretty good by, sun by sunshine, as you can see. Um, anything north facing gets hit by sunshine less. But overall, earlier in the season, Blackham gets hit with the most sunshine overall. Because of seventh heaven and the beating sun it has on it all day and how beautiful it feels, Blackham has the edge for sunshine. The score is now 16 Blackham, 14 Whistler. Let's talk about views. The views on either side are insane. Some people prefer Whistler, some people pr prefer Black Home. Black Home's got like sharper, more jagged mountain views, especially out by the glacier uh, and by the glacier chair. Whistler's got that rolling backcountry forever rolling kind of view, which also is amazing. Me personally, I don't have a personal preference for views. I think they're both awesome. I know a lot of people who like Whistler views better, but I think you gotta see them both. If it's a blue sky day, they're both gonna blow your way. So that's a tie. Let's talk about parking. 
Parking is always a gong show on a busy day at Whistler. You have a couple options. The first and easiest option is the Creekside lot. It's closest to Vancouver. There's lots of spots to park in. You walk quickly to the gondola. There's a bathroom by the lot. And, uh, and it's totally free and it's enclosed. So on a, on a crazy weather day, it's a comfortable place to be. The other advantage to the Creekside lot is it's closer to Vancouver. So on the way home, when traffic starts getting crazy, you're gonna skip all the traffic from you know the Whistler Village to Creekside, which can sometimes be half hour, 45 minutes. So by parking in Creekside, you're potentially saving yourself loads and loads of time waiting. So the Creekside lot's a great spot, you know, uh, if you're coming from the city. The disadvantage is you have to ski Whistler all day long because it's harder to get back to Creekside. The second option is you just park in the village. You got lot, uh, lot three, four, five there. It's like five bucks a day. You park there and you can choose either gondola and walk to them. Um, it's a great option. Like parking's free after five there. So if you pay five bucks, it's a great option if you want to have a beer at the end of the day. Um, and then you've got lot six, seven, and eight at Blackcomb Base Two. Good option if you're skiing Blackcomb. The lot's outside, so you are exposed to the elements versus being underground in the Creekside lot. Uh, and the other issue is you're further from the city. So if you're driving back, sometimes the traffic to even just get to Creekside is going to be long. So for those of you, you know, in a time crunch, Creekside, Creekside will work the best. Um, in terms of parking, I'm going to give the advantage to Whistler because you have the option of the middle lots and you also have the Creekside lot, which probably is the best option if you're coming from the city and you like to ski Whistler. So now we are tied up. Who is the winner? The final results, Laheim. <laughs> Who the hell knows, right? <laughs> Who knows? The truth is, they're both great. That might not be the result you're hoping for, and that might not be your personal belief. You might have loyalty to one mountain or the other. Let me know in the comments which mountain is your favorite. I wanna get the comment section rolling here. I want uh, I want to get the people fired up. I wanna hear from you guys, and I want you guys to discuss in there which mountain is your favorite and the reasons why. I can tell you off the bat that I got a bit more loyalty to Blackcomb. Why is that? Well, it's the first place I started skiing as a kid. I feel like I know it the best and I just have a certain level of comfort being over here. Um, does it mean the terrain on Whistler is worse? No, I go over to Whistler all the time. I think there's just a certain level of comfort and personal preference. The more you get to know a place or you start getting flow on certain runs that you like, it makes you like it better. Now you know where my loyalty lies, you probably already knew. That's it for today, folks. There's nothing I like better than starting a heated online internet debate in a comment section. The keyboard warriors are going to be fighting on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this little comparison. Like I said, both mountains are great. I got a written version of the comparison on the Rise and Alpine website if you want to check it out in the description. If you're enjoying the videos I'm making, you want to support me even more, make sure to keep liking, commenting, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, check out the Rise and Alpine website. You know, reading some posts on the Rise and Alpine website and leaving some comments, um, that's really helpful as well. And lastly, if you want to purchase some merch, I'd love if you do that. I want to start doing, uh, I want to start doing merch shout outs. If you buy a toque or a sticker or a shirt or anything and you plop it somewhere, send a picture to me and I'll include it into a video and I'll start doing merch shout outs because I think that's pretty fun. You know, as we start creating this community, things start rolling and things start getting bigger. So next time you're on a chairlift, look to the guy beside you and ask him, hey, what do you prefer better, Whistler or Blackcomb? If you don't agree, maybe push him off. Don't do that. Be safe. And as always, keep on shredding.